just as a heads up, there will be spoilers for Poppy's Playtime 1 and 2. Poppy Playtime is a horror franchise that kind of falls into the mascot horror genre, much like Five Nights at Freddy's. If Five Nights at Freddy's is the cream of the crop, then Poppy's Playhouse falls into like a second place scenario. It's definitely the second best mascot horror out there. In it, you play as a guy. It kind of remains a mystery for most of the game on who he is. He enters this factory in order to accomplish some task that, again, is not entirely made clear. The gameplay in the first Poppy Playtime is fairly simple. You get a stretchy hand, and you have to use stretchy hand to solve puzzles. As you progress through, you there is constant tension in the air. You never know, really know when you're going to get attacked. You know it's going to happen eventually, because at the start of the game, you're left with a place where a monster statue used to stand, and it's no longer there. As a horror game on its own, it really feels like a demo. It's probably 20 to 30 minutes long tops. And it's actually fairly good um, for, a, you know, for a YouTube viral type situation. It did really well for itself. It got the name out there and it's got a plushy line and it's, it's done its job pretty well. And it's definitely like a six out of 10 horror game. It's not the best out there, but it's how the series got its foot in the door. This game introduced pretty much the base concept of all the mechanics that you'll find throughout. The final battle being effectively a chase scene, the stretchy hands and their different abilities, all that good stuff. It's very bare bones compared to what the series becomes as time goes on, but it does start the story and it does start the gameplay. After playing through the third game, I kind of wish that all of these had been released as one big game, but I also understand that Poppy Playtime 1 and 2 doing so well as why 3 is the way that it is, which we will discuss shortly. After Chapter 1, of course, we get Chapter 2, which introduces a new foe in Mommy Long Legs. And much differently than Huggy Wuggy in the first chapter, she's pretty relentless. She antagonizes you throughout the entire thing. She kind of acts like she's your friend. She steals one of your stretchy hands as well as kidnaps Poppy. She's a persistent antagonist as opposed to somebody who you just know you're going to meet eventually. You know from the moment you meet Mommy Longlegs, you're going to have to deal with her. How? You don't know yet, but you know you're going to have to. She challenges you to a series of mini games, but first you have to replace your hand she busted. You replace your pink stretchy hand, which is the same as your blue hand, with a green stretchy hand, which allows you to effectively like hold electricity this lets you interact with certain switches and get through doors and stuff like that. Once you complete her mini games and run into Kissy Wissy, which, by the way, I dare you to try to explain this game to your friends because you're going to sound ridiculous. You eventually have your final showdown in, again, a chase scene with Mommy Longlegs, defeat her, and get the final code for the train you've been trying to get on. And this is one of the first really big flaws in the Poppy Playtime franchise. It's a four-digit code, effectively, with color combinations, but it's very brute forceable. I very distinctly remember going through this section and getting three of the numbers, and I was like, wait a minute, I can probably just brute force this. So I did. I got the fourth code, and I got on the train, and I left the game, and I was done, missing the entire final chase sequence as well as the kill for Mommy Longlegs. I had to go back later and watch a YouTube video to see what actually was supposed to happen because I didn't want to replay the entire game again. It was definitely an unintended sequence break that sort of soured the experience for me because up until that point, it had been pretty fun. So that was definitely a downer. But moving on from there, we enter Poppy Playtime 3. And this is where we begin our little conversation here because Poppy Playtime 3 is both one of the best mascot horror games you can play and also one of the worst. It is absolutely riddled with pretty much game-breaking bugs. And I know why this happened. You can see it in the clips here where they definitely wanted, and this is actually is funny because it's an impact of Matt Pat retiring. They wanted to get this game out before he retired. That is 100% what happened. They did not finish bug testing it. The game wasn't complete. But they were like, Matt Pat is retiring. We need to get this game out there. Not only as an homage to for him, of course, but also 
so he can do a theory on it and get people excited to play it and play it on GT Live and all that. And you know this is the case because there's two actual homages to the Game Theory channel in the game, one being the child character who talks to you over the phone is named Ollie, and that other being there's actually this painting you run into in the kind of mansion area uh, that ba- gives one of Matt Pat's, you know, signature things of a clap and a half. And while these homages are very cute, and it's great that he's immortalized in so many ways as like basically one of the founding fathers of YouTube, it did cause them to rush the game out in an unfinished state, and it caused me no end of heartaches. There, I ran into so many bugs, but we'll get to that in a moment. So what's good about the game? Honestly, it's probably one of the best horror experiences you can have. It's really good. The tension is constantly high. The amount of fear and adrenaline and anticipation you get from just exploring and nothing happening. You're on the edge of your toes all the time. And just when you decide to let your guard down, things start happening. A chase scene happens. uh, Something appears around the corner. Your character starts hallucinating. There's so many fun things that happen in this little three and a half hour game that are almost overshadowed by the fact that I, again, I ran into many game-breaking bugs that caused me a lot of headache and heartache. But overall, I would say this is definitely one of the best horror franchises out there right now in terms of, like, again, that, like, indie horror mascot thingy. It's got really good puzzles, if not a little under-explained. The game could definitely use some like indicators on what you can and can't do or what you're supposed to interact with because the little yellow tape that they use isn't always apparent because also it tends to glow and sometimes it just looks like a light or sometimes you just don't see it because it's so dark. The sound design in the game is really, really, really good. When things are chasing you, the click clacks are apparent at the final scene at the end, which I don't really want to spoil, but there is a deck, there's a definitely a directional element to it, and you can tell like where things are coming from and what, and there's stompy stomps and the way your feet clack and the laugh that the teacher makes when she's chasing you. There's a lot of really good stuff here, and it is a shame that it's so broken right now. I would definitely say wait a month, month and a half, two months before you buy it if you don't want to have to deal with bugs. But honestly. Once my frustration calmed down, I I realized I genuinely have a really good time with this game. The designs are terrifying of the monsters. All the mechanics are fun and cohesive. Um, As you progress through Chapter 3, you actually get two more hand attachments. One of them's like a purple hand that lets you bounce off springboards, and another one's a flare gun, which isn't overutilized. It doesn't work super well for seeing, and there's only one section where you actually have to use it. These little animals are chasing you around and it kind of scares them off. I feel like it was meant more to be used as a lighting tool, like a like a flashlight, but the game didn't really need it past the point where you got it. And also it didn't really work that well because the lighting in the game hasn't been perfected yet. The shadows don't work right. So a lot of times you'd fight the fire the flare and the shadows would just be all over the place and you really couldn't see anything new. There were definitely times when it helped. But most of the time, I didn't use the flare gun, except for the one instance where you kind of had to, until you didn't, because, again, the game broke and the monster stopped spawning and I was just able to walk through it freely. There's also another section where you're being chased by a dog puppet and you effectively have to navigate a maze blindly. And it's very difficult to do because the wrong turn gets you killed instantly. There's nothing you can do about it. So you take some almost mandatory deaths trying to find your way through this little short maze. Plus you get hung on like the tubes you have to run through. And just again, I hate to say it, but the game could have used a little bit more time in the oven before they released it. But overall I did have a great experience with it. I played all the way through it. I got some good scares. Um, The tension was very, very, very high. So I definitely applaud them for what they accomplished here, even if I have to dock them some for the egregious amount of bugs. So if Poppy Playtime 1 is a 6, I would give Poppy Playtime 2 a 7? And then I actually give Poppy Playtime 3 also a 7. If if it weren't for the 3 or 4 like game-breaking bugs I ran into, I would give it a 9 but I have to dock at some points for making me reload and replay sections through no fault of my own. But yeah, I do recommend giving Poppy Playtime 3 
If, like I said, if you can survive and you know manage the bugs, then it's worth getting now. If you want to wait until the bugs are cleared up and you can just play the game without having to worry about where you're going to get hard stopped at next, I understand that too. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, likes, comments, subscriptions, all the good stuff help out a bunch. Uh, if you want to see more game reviews in the future, it is kind of hard to review short indie games like this because you don't really want to spoil them, but also you need to talk about them. So all I can really do is talk about the game mechanics, sound design, graphics, etc., and of course the bugs and give them ratings based on that. But yeah, until next time, this is Dummies.